Uh, the first talk in this block is going to be from uh, Professor Daniele Marinazzo from the University of Ghent. Uh, so it's a, it's a real pleasure to have Daniele here again. He's uh, spoken last in a workshop, I think, when it was in um, Antwerp, I think, right? Three, yeah, three right. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it and uh, it's great to have him because I actually I asked him to speak in the workshop when it was originally going to be in Melbourne and he wasn't going to get to Melbourne this year. So this is one of the great benefits of having the workshop online. <laughs> So we could actually do that uh, after all. Uh, okay, Danielle, I'll hand over to you now. Uh, you've got okay, the, uh, the presentation going already, and uh, we can all I, I can hear and see you fine, and I'm sure that means everyone else can too. So over to you. Okay, excellent. Thanks a lot, Joe, and thanks everyone for being here. And I'm really glad that the CNS and uh, organizers managed to pull this over uh, in a such a, a smooth and inclusive way. So thanks a lot. Um, now I will go through my talk. Uh, since I have uh, my presentation in full screen, I won't see what happens in the uh, question sessions, but please uh, uh, do ask questions. Joe will convey them to me or I will go through them at the end of the talk. Uh, okay, so here we are. Uh, the, the, what I will present is a simple model uh, from statistical physics, which is the Ising model of magnetization, or actually Ising model, German, and uh, see what uh, it can reveal about the structure function relationship of the um, in the human brain. So uh, the framework, which I am sure you already have been uh, introduced to in previous talks, is uh, in simultaneous processes living on uh, dynamical systems. So uh, here we have a dynamical system S composed of different uh, units. Um, and each of them can be regarded as a, a target in turn. So in this case, we call the target Y. And in the simplest case, we have uh, just one driver and the target, and we'll see how we can go to uh, uh, more uh, variables. So in this case, uh, Dynamic process means that we have uh, a present and we have the past of the system. So whenever you see a minus sign, it indicates the past. And so uh, when we in, um, consider the flow of time, we can uh, study directed uh, dynamical interactions of the type of uh, a transfer entropy or gradual causality uh, within and between processes uh, by means of conditioning on the past of the system. And notably, conditioning on the past of the target and on the past of the rest of the system. So the framework uh, of predictive information is the following one. So when we uh, take the target Y, the, the entropy of the system is uh, given by the Shannon formulation and is basically the information contained in the present of the process Y. And then we can uh, start to decomposing this uh, information uh, so we have uh, the unexplained information about the present of why the target, even the past of the rest of the system. And then we have the predictive information about the target, which is called the prediction entropy, uh, namely the information contained in the past of the system. So you can see here the conditioning to both X and Y in the case of two variables that can be used to predict the present of the target Y. So in this case, we have a first decomposition of the entropy in uh, prediction entropy and uh, unexplained information. Now, the prediction entropy uh, can be uh, fully, uh, sorry, further decomposed. The predictive information can be uh, decomposed in two terms. One is called the information storage or self entropy. So, uh, our host here uh, is uh, one of the uh, leading experts and probably the the person who defined uh, information storage in this way, uh, which is basically the information contained in the past of the driver that can be, uh, sorry, of the target that can be used to predict its own present. And then we have the information transfer, also called the transfer entropy, which is the information transfer from uh, the candidate driver X to the target Y, uh, and namely is the information contained in the past of the driver that can be used to predict the present of the target above and beyond the information already contained in the past of the target. So this is uh, called the, the transfer entropy. So in case uh, X doesn't, the past of X 
does not reduce our surprise on the presence of y. So these two terms are equal, so the logarithm uh, goes to zero, and we have no transfer entropy in this case. Now, uh, I will focus today in information dynamics at transition, uh, transition in the dynamics. So, uh, as you can imagine, uh, information transfer will be minimum when the system is disordered, so uh, completely uh, noisy, no interaction. Uh, and uh, this is the case here on the left of the diagram. On the other hand, uh, what happens? Uh, as you know, the, one of the difference, of the main difference between, for example, transfer entropy and gradual causality on one hand and the correlation on the other is that when the driver and the target became, become the same, uh, then the correlation goes to one. On the other hand, the transfer entropy uh, or the gradual causality drop towards zero because we don't need anymore the driver to uh, predict the target. And this is what happens, for example, in a system of uh, Kuramoto oscillators uh, implemented on a lattice. So when the coupling becomes too strong, the, we have a phenomenon here called explosive synchronization, so a fast transition from disorder to order. And also we have a jump in uh, the total transfer entropy of the system, uh, which then uh, goes down back to uh, lower levels. Uh, a paradigm of uh, transition is uh, given by the easy model. The easy model was originally meant to study magnetization of a system. So uh, we have just two states of different uh, spins, so uh, pointing upwards or pointing downward, downwards for uh, positive or negative magnetization. So when uh, the temperature is high, the system behaves chaotically, so there is no uh, coupling or so. Uh, when the temperature goes towards zero, the system is uh, frozen. On the other hand, we have an intermediate range of temperature, uh, which can be a wide or a small uh, range, which is called the, the critical regime. And this is when uh, some uh, higher order uh, interactions uh, appear, some long range correlation, and also there are some clusters of coordinated activity that uh, form together. Uh, the IC model uh, and in general uh, dynamical system close to transition have become a paradigm also uh, stretching much beyond uh, the ferromagnetism. So they've been used to study uh, polarization in uh, social media uh, or in social sciences in general, uh, financial uh, market fluctuations and the crashes, and uh, in the brain epileptic epileptic seizures as a paradigm of transition uh, to an ordered state, but not only. So, for example, also a paradigm in which you learn something. Uh, it's a transition from a more disordered to a more ordered uh, state. So, uh, let's go to information dynamics. A transition, uh, there is an early uh, study by Matsuda Tao in 1996 showing that the mutual information, both pairwise and global, uh, peak at the critical temperature in an uh, icing system. So uh, we stop here and then we see what happens with the, with the transfer entropy. Uh, but let's say that in this case, uh, we have an information-based quantity and uh, a transition in a dynamical system. In this case, the peak happens at the same time. So what happens when we start to implement our icing spins on the brain structural connection? So we have the structural connectivity uh, obtained uh, by uh, uh, diffusion imaging and then uh, parcellation of the brain in different areas. So we call uh, J the structural connectivity, and we consider a uh, different configuration of an easing uh, system of uh, N spins, where N is the number of the nodes living on our network. So in this case, we can uh, exactly compute the transfer entropy between uh, pairs of spins, given this uh, formula. So what happens uh, when we change the temperature of the easing system? We, uh, we see that uh, the average correlation between spins in blue and the average transfer entropy peak in the critical uh, region. On the other hand, the similarity between the pattern of correlation and the, the structural connectivity, but also the similarity of the transfer entropy and the structural connectivity have a minimum in the same range. Uh, 
This makes sense because indeed uh, we know that uh, when um, the, the, the structural con connectome is somehow uh, fixed, even though it can change during the, the lifespan or so. Uh, but on the other hand, for uh, the switching dynamics of the uh, brain, namely uh, the activity of the brain at rest, what has been called by uh, Gustavo de et al, uh, the dynamical repertoire, um, it's basically a switching between different uh, patterns of correlation. So somehow, uh, at the critical, uh, in the critical range, the underlying structural connectivity must be partially forgotten in order to uh, forgotten or no, forgiven, sorry, forgiven or forgotten, no, forgotten, sorry, no. uh, in order to uh, allow uh, switching between different uh, degenerate uh, dynamical states. Uh, by the way, for those of you who study uh, Granger causality uh, instead of transfer entropy, Granger causality is based on uh, autoregressive uh, models, but Granger causality and transfer entropy are equivalent for Gaussian variables, as shown by uh, Lionel Barnett and Adam Barrett, which are also uh, frequent guests of this workshop. Um, also, Granger causality and transfer entropy are equivalent for easing spins uh, when the coupling is low. So here we see Granger causality called as delta and the transfer entropy here, and uh, one against the other. So they more or less lie on the same uh, line, then they start to deviate one from another uh, with uh, for high values of coupling. Also, there is a factor two between uh, Granger causality and transfer entropy. So uh, if now we implement uh, N uh, easing spins uh, on a... Um, uh, on a lattice, each one connected to uh, k input spins. So we have uh, the in degree k, which is independently sampled with a certain probability uh, p in decay. Uh, and then uh, for a large number of spins, the outcoming, uh, the probability of outcoming uh, uh, information flow follows a Poisson distribution. So we have here, uh, the, the input, here we have the uh, outgoing connectivity distribution, this is the incoming connectivity distribution, and this is the uh, distribution of uh, incoming connectivity. So, uh, what happens if we look separately at incoming and outgoing connectivity? Uh, here we have, as a function of the degree k, the connectivity, we have the incoming connectivity and the outgoing connectivity. So, uh, the outgoing connectivity grows with k. On the other hand, the incoming connectivity uh, reaches uh, a certain threshold at a certain point and stays more or less constant. Uh, more interestingly, here we have uh, in log scale the in degree uh, distribution of the connectivity as a function of incoming connectivity. So we see that we have a power law for small coupling and a more exponential distribution for a strong coupling. So we have a distribution of the incoming connectivity, which is also uh, depending on the on how many, uh, how much connectivity each uh, node receives, and this speaks to uh, the so-called law of diminishing marginal returns. So uh, in many situation, we can expect that uh, each node of a network may handle a limited amount of information. So uh, cannot deal with an infinite amount of information. Uh, this constraint, which is basically a structural constraint, suggests that uh, uh, networks of information flow should also exhibit uh, some evidence of this uh, uh, law of diminishing marginal returns, which is a very known uh, principle of economics, which basically states that when we um, increase the amount of a uh, of a certain resource and we kept fixed all the other resource, the resulting change in the output will eventually diminish. So if I have a piece of land and I start uh, planting seeds, at a certain point I will have a linear growth of my uh, outcome. So of how many uh, vegetables and fruits are collected as a function of the seeds that I plant, but at a certain point uh, this will drop. And the same will happen if I study too much, if I attend too many online conferences, etc. So, in this sense, uh, we define uh, 
the ratio between outgoing and incoming connectivity as a proxy of the presence of this phenomenon. So we can postulate that when this ratio is greater than one, we have uh, an evidence of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Uh, so what happens? Let's go back to the uh, easing model implemented on the connectome. So we have two cases here. Uh, a more coarse parcellation with the 66 uh, nodes and a more dense parcellation with the uh, uh, almost a thousand nodes. So here we see the um, um, the susceptibility. So the magnification of the of the system. Here we have uh, also the uh, the magnetic uh, capacity of the system, and then we have the transfer entropy, which also peaks in the critical regime. And then we have the are the ratio between outgoing and incoming connectivity, which uh, also has a peak uh, in the critical regime, not exactly uh, at the critical value for the more uh, sparse connectome, but on the other hand, approaching the peak uh, of the um, uh, magnetic susceptibility, which becomes narrower uh, in the limit of n infinite. So when n increases, we have a narrow, narrower peak. And so uh, together with the transfer entropy, together with the correlation that we see before, also the evidence of the diminishing margin returns and also the presence in this case of information bottlenecks uh, appears in the critical regime. Uh, from this figure, we also see uh, together, we see in the first uh, panel, the uh, ratio between outgoing and incoming connectivity from each node. That's why here is uh, called with a uh, uh, lower case R because the, the, with upper case we have the global value and the, here we have the, the pairwise value for each uh, node. Uh, and this compare with different uh, metrics of the network. So we have the strength, the efficiency and the betweenness of the network. So we see that uh, for small networks, we have a kind sort of dependence uh, of linear dependency of the strength, even though it's not exactly the same thing. So we have a kind of hole here, we have some higher values here. Uh, on the other hand, for a higher, uh, uh, for a finer connectome, we see that uh, this dependence is only minimally uh, present. We have some uh, nodes which have a lower degree of connectivity, but higher uh, bottlenecks uh, ratio. So, uh, as we uh, plot the ratio between outgoing and, outgoing and incoming connectivity as a function of the strength, we see that there is a, a kind of a, a, a first a constant or flat uh, distribution, and then it goes up after a certain uh, strength. And here are the nodes, so the, the regions of the brain, which are more prone to become bottlenecks of information for the 66 nodes connectome and the 1000 nodes connectome. Another interesting things to look at is the time between uh, spin flips. So how long uh, a spin stays in a state before uh, flipping. And we see that the posterior uh, regions of the default mode network are those who, uh, which uh, show a longer latency before uh, spin flips. So uh, let's go back uh, to a few uh, slides before and uh, let's ask ourselves what comes before the transition to order or the peak in uh, information-based uh, quantities. So uh, this is the uh, result from the end of the 90s. This is a, an important result from uh, uh, Barnett et al. Also, uh, our uh, friend Joe was in that paper, showing that uh, global transfer entropy uh, peaks in the paramagnetic phase. So when the temperature is slightly higher, so the system is slightly more disordered, uh, while approaching the transition here. So the pairwise transfer entropy has a peak at the critical value. On the other hand, the global transfer entropy in the whole system has a peak slightly in the paramagnetic phase. This was a beautiful and important result because it shows that um, 
if we take uh, the, the critical point as the point in which the system transition from a more disorder to a more ordered state, this can happen, for example, when uh, there is an onset, uh, onset of an epileptic seizure or when there is a crash in the stock market and so on. So we have that the transfer entropy can be uh, used as a uh, warning sign of an impeding transition towards. On the other hand, uh, in this case, we need to compute, to compute transfer entropy across the whole system and also we need to condition on the past. So uh, we asked ourselves two questions. The first one is, uh, can we have precursor of transition also based on static data without conditioning on the past? And this can happen, for example, when we have uh, behavioral scores uh, across several subjects. So instead of conditioning, uh, of finding a distribution of value in time, we find the distribution of value across subjects. And also, do we really have to measure all the variables or we can build precursors of transition towards order based on a small number of variables and maybe a number as small as only three? And so in this case, we uh, adopt the framework of uh, partial information decomposition. So uh, for those of you who are uh, familiar with Mutual information, then mutual information extended to three variables in which you have the interaction information, which is the amount of information shared between uh, three variables at the same time. We can see that uh, the framework of interaction information decomposition allows the definition of redundancy and synergy uh, as an, in an exclusive way. So when the, inf the two information from one variable to the target and another variable to the target uh, overlap, then we have redundancy, and we don't. We don't, when they don't overlap, we have synergy. On the other hand, we might want to have redundancy and synergy at the same time. And so this is the framework of partial information decomposition, uh, uh, first introduced by uh, Williams and Beer in the year 2000, and then uh, developed in different uh, ways by. Uh, by the group of Joe Lizier, by uh, uh, the group of uh, Niels uh, Bershinger, uh, also uh, Robin Ince uh, has worked on that. Uh, and now we have uh, uh, also uh, the yeah, also the group of uh, Michael Vibral, and uh, to some extent also our next uh, speaker, uh, Pedro Mediano, has uh, worked on this kind of uh, uh, expansion of uh, information. So, uh, in this case, in the framework of partial information decomposition, you have distinct non-negative measures of redundancy and synergy, accounting for the possibility that they can both exist as separate elements of information modification. So, uh, in this case, uh, the components of the partial information decomposition cannot be obtained uh, using classic information theory uh, measures. So, we need somehow to go beyond uh, Shannon uh, information theory by introducing a fourth relationship, which can be a sort of a postulate, which depends on how we see the system. In our case, if we define the redundancy as the minimum of the information provided by each individual source to the target, uh, we uh, satisfy the property that the redundant transfer entropy does not depend on the fact that the source processes are correlated between them. So, uh, we can agree or disagree with this. We can discuss later. So in this case, we can have the uh, information decomposition in two cases. Uh, in the lagged case, in which we condition on the past, and in the instantaneous case, in which we don't condition on the past. So uh, we have unique information, redundancy and synergy. So we have two unique informations, as we saw here, from one uh, driver and the second drive, then we have synergy and redundancy. And then we have the individual uh, transfer entropies, and in this case, we have individual uh, pairwise mutual information. So, what happens? Uh, if we implement an easing system on a, on a lattice, we see that both for the instantaneous and the lagged case, 
is a synergy, the quantity which peaks in the paramagnetic phase. So here, beta is the inverse temperature. That's why the peak now it's on the left of the uh, critical temperature, which is the full uh, line here in the previous figure by in the paper of 2013 by uh, Jolisier Barnett et al. It was on the right, but it's basically the same thing because this is the inverse of the temperature. So uh, the redundancy peaks uh, at the transition. On the other hand, the synergy peaks before the transition. Also, if we consider here as a target, this spin called one, and then we have different spins uh, surrounding it, we see that uh, the synergy peak approaches the critical value as the amount of synergy decreases. So for example, if we take uh, uh, two and three, which are two spins, one to the left and one to the right of our target, uh, there is a high amount of synergy. And so the peak is more on the left. If on the other hand, we start considering, for example, three and six, which are both on the right, and one of the two is not even directly uh, connected to our target, then we have redundancy between uh, spin three and spin six. And indeed, the peak shifts towards the critical value, both for the instantaneous and the lagged variables. And so uh, we tried to implement this again, going back to the human structural connectome and uh, using uh, a data set of uh, almost 200 subjects uh, with an age range from five years to 85 years. And we ask ourselves the following question. Uh, if we take the structural connectome as the sole variable defining age, and we try to implement uh, a dynamical system on it. In particular, we look at the synergy as that value which uh, characterizes the, the regime in which the system starts to configure towards an order parameter where inter uh, interesting things uh, happen. Uh, then we ask ourselves, does the synergy still peak before the critical point, even if the network is non-uniform? Because the results I showed here is for a regular lattice. On the other hand, the, the human connectome is not. Then, are the hubs of structural connectivity in terms of degree and centrality also hubs of synergy? And then, is there association with age? So first of all, uh, we start to compare the synergy with topological indices such as the node strength, the betweenness, and the closeness. So we see that uh, there is no, uh, there is a sort of relationship, but not a uniform relationship between the strength and the values of the synergy for uh, each node. Also, we have uh, the nodes which are ranked in terms of. Uh, incoming uh, synergy. So in this case, uh, we see uh, those uh, regions uh, named here as those which have a higher value of incoming uh, synergy. And also we have uh, both positive and uh, negative association of synergy with age. So we have uh, those regions which are uh, more associated, uh, are positive correlated with age. This is a uh, Spearman a correlation with the uh, uh, robust uh, statistics uh, to uh, take into account the effect of possible outliers. On the other hand, we have a negative association for uh, other regions, in particular uh, some frontal ones. And then we see that uh, in some regions, this association is continuous with age. On the other hand, in other regions, uh, it's limited to the first uh, more or less uh, 30 years, and then uh, it reaches uh, a sort of a plateau, both for positive and negative associations. In this case, R for uh, right superior temporal posterior lobe for posterior positive uh, correlation and right frontal pole for a negative correlation. Uh, so, um, oh, something died here, I don't care. And let's go back, e, oops, Jesus. Current anyway, I was more or less at the end, yes. Okay. 
Uh, so to conclude, uh, we see that uh, the total amount of information transfer is maximized at criticality when um, rising spins are connected according to a structural connector. Then the ratio between input and output information flow is also maximum related uh, with the law of diminishing margin returns. Then uh, the physical quantity that uh, acts as a transition precursor is a synergy. And uh, we can found this marker of uh, an uh, upcoming tr uh, transition considering as few as three variables and uh, we don't necessarily need lagged interactions. And also when implementing this uh, framework on the human connectome, uh, we have differential association with age in different parts of the brain. So here are some uh, references and thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Daniela. I'll give you the, uh, the audible applause and I'm sure there'll be some virtual applause coming through on the chat window in, uh, in just a moment. Um, okay, so we've got plenty of time for questions, uh, plenty of time for questions, but uh, none have, oh, here we go, one's, one's come through right here. Uh, I have plenty, plenty myself, but uh, I'll do the right thing and let everyone else have a say first. Okay, so Abed is asking a question. I'm going to invite him on the screen yeah. while I read it out. I'm going to read the questions for the purposes of the recording. Uh, do you have a speculation why there is uh, different correlations of synergy with aging? So I guess he means on the two figures you showed us for different regions, one yeah. went up and one went down. Yeah, so um, in this case, we, uh, hi Abed, so uh, we didn't have uh, any uh, a particular... Um, Hypothesis. So um, let's say that uh, after uh, we uh, came up with the results, we had some interesting uh, discussion with uh, colleagues working working on uh, uh, connectivity and aging, uh, in particular uh, to my know from uh, uh, from the University of Cannes from INSERM. Uh, so uh, the question that we wanted to ask is that uh, if the only variable that we can associate with aging is uh, the large scale topology of uh, white matter connections. Uh, and our variable of interest is um, the, um, uh, let's say, the dynamical state in which we have a transition from a more disordered to a more ordered state. And whatever you can associate with this. So as I told you, you can have somehow, sometimes uh, uh, learning can be associated with this. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, let's say something more pathological uh, can be associated with this. Like, uh, uh, so we know that, for example, our brains stops being, uh, I mean, starts being less elastic when we age or so. And also, so we store memories in a different ways. We adapt differently to, uh, uh, our uh, to the external world and so so this of course uh, there are so many other variables which influence aging that uh, there is not too much to uh, that I want to speculate here on the other hand if we just take the large scale structural connectomes and we see that if it has an influence of the uh, dynamical repertoire and the switching between uh, uh, patterns of uh, statistical dependencies uh, at the large scales, then we have some regions in which we have uh, a positive association with age, so meaning that some region, uh, uh, let's say, uh, are more uh, synergistic, uh, so uh, maybe to compensate for other things. So, for example, uh, Fernando Rosas, and I'm not sure if also Pedro uh, Mediano, they have a, a nice paper on bioarchival a few months ago, uh, uh, together with the Jesus Cortez uh, on the uh, synergy and the redundancy. Uh, so using the O information uh, developed by Pedro, they study different association with age. So this is also a very beautiful paper and probably uh, more informed than this one. So, so uh, I guess that uh, there is a lot to, to investigate on this. In, but there are some regions, let's say, we that we can speculate that um, they try to make up for some other deficits and some regions which, uh, on the other hand, uh, are less, uh, uh, become less uh, uh, participant, participative to the global network dynamics. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, just asking if there's some concrete speculation or it's still like more to hypothesize this. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Abed. I'll take uh, I'll take you down now. Um, now the next question we've got uh, two votes on this one is: Were the connectomes weighted or binary? In the, la the latter case, are they thresholded? Okay, so yeah, the the connectomes were uh, uh, weighted and they were uh, thresholded. Uh, the, the the structural connectomes. In this case, we used already uh, processed connectomes from the um, uh, UCSD. Uh, uh, database from the uh, NKI uh, Rockland dataset, so you can uh, see all the details there. So uh, they are uh, thresholded and whited. Okay, fantastic. But Pritchard, I didn't invite you on stage because that looked like a fairly straightforward one, but feel free to come back if there's a, a clarification you want. Um, uh, Zinni is asking actually uh, just on that, can you yeah. include a reference to the other people on the synergy and aging that you just mentioned, perhaps. Uh, yes, I'm just uh, always Googling type it. In there. Yep. And uh, here it is. Oh. You can always paste it into the, the comments section here. Uh, once you got it, there we go. Perfect. Uh, okay, the next question we've got is from, uh, from Connor. I'll in invite you on screen if you want to clarify it, Connor, but feel free to reject it. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, do you think the peak in transfer entropy is associated with a peak in the unique or synergistic information transfer or perhaps both? Uh, you, you did show us the synergistic having a strong peak there, but I don't think we saw the unique here. Um, uh, yeah, and it's, so uh, for the unique, there is also a paper by Niels Barsinger, but uh, our uh, speculation is that if we consider the the... The information as the composers, uh, synergy, redundancy, and uh, unique is uh, is the synergy uh, which uh, peaks in the um, uh, in the paramagnetic phase and only the the synergy. Uh, by the way, so since you can uh, obtain, so if you go uh, back to the to the talks, since you have the transfer entropy as the unique plus the uh, redundancy, and since you see that the transfer entropy, the the pairwise transfer entropy as a peak in the uh, uh, at the critical value, and uh, also the redundancy as a peak of the at the critical value, then necessarily also the redundancy must have a peak at the critical value. So uh, sorry, also the unique information must have a peak at the critical value. On the other hand. Uh, the deviation from the peak is specific to the synergy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Connor, if you want a clarification on that, just let us know, but I'll, I'll move that one along. Okay. Then Rodrigo is asking, um, and again, I'll invite you on screen, but feel free to ignore it. Uh, among how many variables do you measure synergy? Is it measured in bits? Uh, so, um, this uh, is uh, uh, basically so the, the, the framework is uh, valid for uh, any uh, estimator of your um, uh, of your uh, information transfer, even using, for example, the the covariance based estimator, which basically for Gaussian variables you have uh, uh, the equivalence with the uh, with transfer entropy. So uh, it's equivalent to the for these values of coupling. Uh, basically, you can have one or the other, so uh, you can measure it in bits or you can measure it as a reduction of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of variance, so it's uh, basically the, the same. And among how many variables? So uh, this is always between triplets of variables. Uh, then for the lattice, we uh, went up to uh, 256, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, 2024. Um, uh, Spins on the lattice. On the other hand, for the human connectome, uh, we had uh, uh, 96 regions, and in that case, we had uh, anyway synergy measured in groups of uh, three variables. Now you can go to more uh, of three variables. We can see later in the the framework of uh, of Pedro is actually uh, of Pedro Mediano of the information is very convenient in this because it uh, allows a much faster. Uh, Expansion. So indeed, uh, now we have a, a, a preprint uh, coming up, uh, especially uh, hopefully next week, in which uh, we 
extend the uh, the O information by Pedro uh, conditioning on the past, so having a partial information decomposition uh, to uh, more than three variables. Mm -hmm. So synergistic and redundant multiplets with uh, more than three uh, variables. Okay, so I can see in the comments Rodrigo is quite happy with that answer. Uh, okay, we've spent some time, so uh, and, and there's no more questions there, but I have a few to throw at you. Um, so the first one I had was early on in the talk, you mentioned that um, uh, Granger causality and transfer entropy were um, empirically equivalent for, for low coupling in, in some of the early experiments. What I was confused yeah. about there is how did you measure um, Granger causality? Because you had discrete variables, right? So um, so what did you sort of interpret the zeros and ones as continuous and, and just use uh, Granger as is? Uh, on those, is that is that how it worked? Uh, let me uh, think. Uh, yes, indeed. Let me, uh, I have to go uh, back to uh, this. Uh, this was a uh, physical A paper of two thousand eight, uh, not two thousand ten. Uh, I'm not even uh, a, a the authors uh, of that paper. That's why. So it's not even one of my papers. Is by uh, from my uh, collaborators in Italy. So I think it was in a paper in which they defined uh, Granger causality uh, between uh, phases. But uh, I will definitely uh, look it up and then uh, going back to the discussion. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. It's it's not it's not too big a, a deal. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question I have for you is uh, uh, oh, actually, there's there's one on here. So let me flick to the the one that's on here. Yeah. Uh, so Adam Ponzi is asking, and I, again, I'll invite you on screen, but feel free to reject it, Adam, if uh, if you don't need to clarify. Is that peak of synergy in the paramagnetic regime specific to the particular definition using the minimum of the individual TE? Uh, it's the uh, minimum of the, the two mutual information. Yeah, yeah. So in, the, in the sense of how you define uh, synergy, let's say. So uh, I don't think it's the case because there is also the paper by uh, Niels Bershinger et al., which I will also link there, in which they find also um, a peak in the in the paramagnetic phase, mm -hmm. and uh, they use a different uh, yeah. uh, implementation. So they use the XOR uh, formulation. So I will point yeah. out to the Actually, paper. I think, I think that paper was from Raul Vicente, not uh, not Birchinger. Is that correct? Uh, let sure me check. Let me check. Uh, Vicente. Uh, I have to check who the first author is. But yeah, it was it was definitely using it was using Birching as uh, measure. But I think it was from yeah, yeah, indeed, public. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was that one, but uh, yeah, it's not the first author of that. But they have to check which paper is. But uh, yeah, uh, so um, in that case, they use the X or and they use a different uh, um, postulate. So it's quite, uh, it's uh, it's independent on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's interesting, isn't it? That the, 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 they're very different measures, but they're giving effectively the same result there, which yeah. is which is quite interesting. Uh, yeah, I, exactly. I'm, I'm going to. Put them on a point. Once we find it, we can put it in the in the comments there. Uh, okay, there's there's about one minute left, so I'm going to start inviting Pedro up on stage. While I do, I'm going to throw you one more uh, 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 more exploratory question. Um, so uh, you had a, a statement on the slides near the start that said um, you were looking at the the relationship between the transfer entropy and CIJ, which I think was correlation at that point. Uh, and yeah. you had a quote that uh, they, they were un, unrelated or uncorrelated when uh, at criticality where you're forgetting the underlying structure yeah. to allow it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I really like that. Uh, I really like that quote. I think that speaks a lot to, to what's happening uh, at criticality. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, in that paper, we also showed how this indeed uh, uh, is less evident under uh, anesthesia. So in that paper, which is the chaos paper, which I quoted at the end, I can also maybe link it later. We saw that indeed uh, under deep anesthesia, where the dynamical repertoire is minimized, uh, then you have more similarity to the underlying uh, structure, let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's lots more I want to dig into 
that with you, but uh, I think we're probably out of time. Thank you very much uh, again, Daniela. No problem. Uh, Thanks to everyone. Especially since, and, uh, uh, since you're presenting from, from your, your beach holiday. <laughs> it's, it's very nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's a pleasure. It's a good. Uh, I have Excellent. to dive back into science for a bit. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you very much. Right. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll stay on for the next talk anyway, and I will uh, send yeah. some links there or something.